Hey you guys, happy new year. Uh, do things look a little different around here? I sure hope they do because yesterday, well, excuse me, really quick story. I'll leave a timestamp down below and how we're gonna get into the video if you don't wanna hear this, but I just wanna tell you because I thought it was hilarious. So three days ago, my tripod fell and my camera was obviously on it. The tripod fell, the tripod was clearly broken. I knew I had to get it exchanged and go buy a new one, but my camera looked like it was fine. Like I turned it on, it was fine. The very next day, I sit down to go film with my new tripod and my old camera. I try to get this video going and wouldn't you know, the camera is actually dead. And I've been riding with that camera for like seven years now. I was completely devastated and I had to run out and go buy a new camera. Was not a cheap, cheap thing to do at all, especially when I wasn't planning to do it, but obviously I needed one. So I upgraded from the Canon 60D to the Canon 90D, if that gives you any idea numerically how far along we've come since I bought my last camera. But yeah, so I hope the quality is a little better. I do still have to mess with it a little bit. I'm just learning it. I think I can tell a huge difference. And I'm super excited about how much better the image quality is just from where I'm sitting. But uh, the funny thing is I was already planning on making a video <laughs> about bougie purchases, my most bougie purchases of 2020, because I thought it would be a cool opportunity to kind of reflect on those things that we drop major coin on, figure out if it was worth it, figure out if there was something better we could have done with our money, would we do it again? And at the very least, hopefully help inform our buying choices moving forward. So this camera will definitely be on my bougie purchases of 2021. That's for show. <laughs> so a bougie purchase for me, like the way that I'm going to contextualize this is something that I spent more than I had previously spent on a similar item or something that, I don't know, it's, it's gonna be different for every single person. Like what I consider really expensive, other people may not. And what I consider a little expensive, other people may consider unreasonable. This is really gonna depend on you, kind of your habits, your preferences, and your financial goals. So no matter what, I just hope we can learn a little bit about uh, some of my choices last year and see if they were good ones at all. Before we get started, make sure you check the down bar for links to all my social media platforms. Subscribe if you are new, you know you want to. If you're not new, hey, what's up? How's your mom and them? Come hang out with us on Patreon. We just launched the January book club. We're reading Atomic Habits by James Clear. So excited to get into this book with you guys. Like I get asked all the time if you can be a part of the book club, even if you don't join Patreon, you can. I will have updates and infographics and things like that going up on Instagram, linked down below, and the Facebook group, also linked down below. But the actual book club meeting where we sit down and discuss it, that is exclusive to Patreon. So all that information is down below, but yeah, let's just get started. So one of the first purchases I made in 2020 that kinda was a little excessive was my Peloton bike. You guys have heard me talk about this on Instagram stories a few times. I might have posted it on the grid when I first got it, but to take you back in time a little bit, when I made this purchase, it was right when the first lockdown happened and I'm someone who has to go to the gym. I have to work out and I'll, I'll get into some of this, the kind of caveats of owning a home gym in a moment, but generally I need to go to the gym and I definitely need to go to the gym and kind of have a class. I don't do super great uh, just by myself, left to my own devices. I just kind of gamble about like a bunny in the gym and end up on a cardio machine. So I need a class. Once lockdown happened, obviously I wasn't going to the gym anymore and I needed something for like a cardio experience. I don't have the best knees, so running and jump roping and things like that aren't really options. Lockdown happened and me and my husband were just kind of like, should we do it? And we did. We're coming up on a year of owning this thing. I think we got it in March, March, early May, April, if memory serves. And I thought I would let you guys know how I feel about it. Um, I'm gonna start off by saying if you are considering getting some sort of at home workout gear or system, this can be really tricky because if there's one thing I've learned since owning this Peloton, it's that having, <laughs> this is embarrassing, having a workout system in my house, like literally I can see my Peloton from where I'm sitting. It's in my bedroom, I film my bedroom, it's right there. Having it in my line of vision all the time does not, I repeat, does not guarantee that I will actually use it. And that is so counterintuitive to what you think it would be like. You would imagine like, uh, if I had a home gym, I would be like shredded to bits, you don't even understand. 
but uh, that is not always the case. So I would say if you are trying to decide about investing in a Peloton or a treadmill or, or whatever the case may be, I would err on the, on the side of caution a little bit if you're under the impression that simply owning this thing, purchasing this massively expensive thing is going to change you as a person in any way. I would highly suggest if you're on the fence about something like this, that you start trying to work out on your own without benefit of any type of exercise machine. So for example, I still do yoga. Obviously I'm not going into classes still, but I do it on YouTube. There's tons of great classes for free 99 on YouTube. If you cannot get yourself to get up and kind of self-motivate, self-start in that way with something for free, I don't know, man. I don't know if you're gonna do it when you spend all that money. You might for a little bit, but once that new wears off, like as it always does with purchases, you might find yourself kind of regretting having a little bit of buyer's remorse. Now, my experience with the Peloton as a whole, I love it, I truly do. I really enjoy the fact that it is class-based as opposed to like if you just gave me a treadmill and expected me to like really push myself on that thing on my own volition, it may or may not happen. But uh, I love the class aspect. I love the instructors. My favorite is Hannah Frankenson. If you guys are curious, I just love her. I laugh, I cry. Um, I have a great time during her classes, I enjoy it. Did I use it as much as I should have last year? No, <laughs> not even close, not even close at all. It's definitely my goal to get back into my fitness routine. Um, the benefits of it are huge. It's really just a habit, like brushing your teeth. You have to make it part of like what you do regularly. And until you can make that mindset shift, it will always feel like this big mountain you have to climb. Do I regret it? No. Would I do it again? Yes, because I know that the problems I'm having with getting my use out of it or things I can easily overcome with a little bit of a little bit of work on my part. So that's my opinion on the Peloton. Definitely the most, I think it was the most expensive thing I spent money on last year. Next, we're going to talk about expensive skincare. So some of the stuff in this video is going to be lifestyle and some of the stuff is going to be beauty just a little bit, but all the beauty stuff is skincare related. Uh, I'm going to give you a quick rundown on something. If you're new to my channel in 2019, I went on a makeup no buy. So I bought no makeup into my house at all for an entire year. Um, but at the same time, and it wasn't planned at all, I went to a dermatologist for the first time in my life to get my acne under control. I had been struggling with it for years. I have spent easily thousands of dollars trying to get this skin under control with my acne. One trip to the dermatologist cleared it right up. And that's because he put me on tretinoin and another um, acne cream. But his recommendation was that I only use cleanser, tretinoin, my acne cream, and moisturizer. That's all I was allowed to use for a whole year. So for all of 2019, I got no new makeup and I got no new skincare. However, 2020 rolled around and I made up for lost time on the skincare side. I sure did. I have been having so much fun with skincare and getting back out there and enjoying products and testing them and seeing the benefits of them. And some of the places I spent like bougie kind of money was on skincare. And it was two particular products in general that were way higher <laughs> than I usually uh, prefer to spend on skincare. The first one that I tried out was the Skin Medica TNS Essential Serum. I don't know why I didn't bring the containers over here. They're in my beauty trash that I'm saving for a video, but um, I'll leave a picture of it right here. So I started off with the TNS Essential Serum from Skin Medica. This is a cult classic in the skincare world. Everybody knows about it. Everybody loves it. It's famous for what it does, which is basically a growth factor serum uh, that also has a chamber in it that has lots of antioxidants and peptide. So it's like a big baller shot collar gonna do some amazing shit to your skin product. Uh, but it's also pretty famous for the, for the price tag. It comes in at about 265, 270 doll hairs. And I'm a big medical skincare lover. I also love K-Beauty. Um, and I know a lot of people think this medical grade skincare thing is a bunch of bullshit. I see why you think that because there is tons of evidence and literature to suggest that it is. But I personally have seen lots of literature and evidence and research that suggests that it isn't. And skincare, I'm starting to think, and based on kind of like how whew, irrational some people in the skincare space can get, I feel like skincare is kind of like politics. Like anytime you can find an argument for one thing, you're gonna find someone else over here saying that you're full of shit and in fact, it's something else. Like it's just so hard to get a, um, like a concise one size fits all kind of uh, opinion on this. Was it worth it? Not really. Um, I enjoyed it. It was a beautiful product. I know that bottles of serum, every time I say that word, I can't help it. The idea is you are supposed to use that, that product for, for months. So it would kind of take multiple bottles of said product 
before you're really gonna see the benefits that the the bottle claims to give you. And I understood that going into it, but once I used it and finished that first bottle, and I feel like I finished it like really quickly, I kind of had this moment with myself where I was like, I cannot justify buying another bottle of this stuff. So I ended up switching over to the Osmosis Growth Factor Serum. Osmos Osmosis is a medical grade skincare brand that I love. I find their products to be incredibly effective and a lot more reasonable. I mean, it's not cheap by any stretch of the imagination. I think the Stim Factor Serum from Osmosis is like $130, and you can easily find skincare at Sephora that runs about that much as well. However, I just think things like Osmosis are more effective than a lot of things that you find at Sephora. That's just my opinion. But yeah, I would, I would say overall that one wasn't worth it. I didn't repurchase it. I probably will never repurchase it. Do I regret it? I mean, kind of, like I just, it was a lot of money to spend on one thing, but I mean, it didn't break me out. It, it didn't end up being a useless product by any stretch of the imagination. I just never repurchased it and I don't think I ever will. Nothing, no shade against the brand. I think they're a great cutting edge brand in the, in the uh, skincare realm. It's just a little too rich for my blood. The next skincare item I bought that was really expensive is the Truth Serum from Truth Treatments. Truth Treatments is my favorite skincare brand. I recently got, ordered so much stuff from this line. It's a little offensive. I will do a skincare haul very soon. I have some medical grade. I have some beauty devices coming in. I have some K-beauty coming in. So thumbs up the video if you wanna see it. I'm so excited to test all this stuff out for you guys. But Truth Treatments is a brand that I've been aware of for about two years before I took the plunge. Again, so incredibly expensive. This bottle of serum was over $200. Um, I'm gonna, spoiler alert, tell you right off the bat, is it worth it? Hell yes, it's worth it in every single sense of the word. Performance wise, I have never been able to use the vitamin C. I, I could barely get the acne under control, never mind being able to put super important uh, ingredients into my routine like vitamin C because my skin would get so irritated. So basically, <laughs> I bought this serum like on a whim, really hoping it would work out because it was so expensive and it's not like I could return it if it didn't. It worked fabulously. This stuff, all of these vitamin C products that Truth Treatments creates works better at lightening my hyperpigmentation than anything else. Brightening the skin, making it super even toned. Truth Treatments is the only thing that does it. In fact, yesterday, you guys might be able to see a little bit right here. I have a little bit of a breakout happening. Um, most of it is dead, but I have scars definitely right here. I always get a scar when I get a breakout. Yesterday, I thought I was gonna film, so I did my makeup to film, right? And I didn't because my camera was dead. <laughs> but uh, I was spending like extra time trying to cover up the redness that I could see through my makeup yesterday. And then last night I put on my vitamin C from Truth Treatments, woke up today and I can't see it at all anymore. It's like, it's crazy how good it works. And it's such a good brand. And on top of that, it works incredibly well, didn't irritate my skin. I saw results so quickly, so quickly. And then the bottle itself, the Truth Treatments Truth Serum, lasted me until about three weeks ago. <laughs> so when I say I used a vitamin C last night, I used my balm. I have the Truth Treatments C Balm. I'm talking about the serum. The serum lasted me, what, that's like 10 months? 10 months and I probably could have made it last longer if I was using the correct amount, but there's a little bit of a learning curve because you need such a tiny amount. It's not even funny, but long story short, expensive skincare as a whole, as a whole, <laughs> as a whole can be worth it. It really depends on what you're hoping to get out of it and uh, what your budget is. But this kind of showed me that when it comes to that, clearly like with the TNS Essential Serum, more expensive is not always better. I feel like the Osmosis Stem Factor that I've been using ever since just as good, works great, love the way it feels on the skin. Um, but with the Truth Treatments, it's worth it 100 times out of 100. I would pay more if they raise the price. Please don't do it, please don't raise it, please. You really don't have to defer to your own judgment. And at the end of the day, you have to understand once you take that investment or take the plunge for that expensive skincare, you're gonna wanna buy it forever. So really, you're gonna have to make that decision. But in my case, well worth it. Next, I have my iPad Pro, my pencil, and my keyboard. They're actually right here. I'm reading my notes off of them right now. I was actually in the market for a new laptop. I'm definitely still in the market for a new laptop because if you can't tell, I'm really slow to upgrade my tech. Check out how long it took me to get a new camera. But overall, I really wanted something that I could travel with and get easy kind of quick work done that wouldn't require me to lug that bad boy out because I swear it weighs like 15 pounds. It's so cumbersome. 
to travel with. And like I said, sometimes I need to get work done, but I just don't want to schlep that big ass thing out. So I was actually looking into getting a MacBook Air, just kind of a really basic model, something to get the job done. And right around that time, the iPad Pro came out, the Magic Keyboard came out, and the Pencil came out. So those of you who don't know, this is the iPad Pro. It's Pro because it doesn't have like those edges and it's a little bigger. The Pencil obviously is the Pencil, which I will get into one of the reasons I love it so much soon. But what made me really pick this one was this keyboard because it just pops the iPad. I'm not doing this gracefully at all. The iPad just pops like so easily in and out of it. And the actual user experience of this keyboard is just like a laptop. Like it's basically a laptop. The only thing is I don't really use it for editing. I can, I just don't wanna have to learn how to do all that. Like it's enough as it is. So I really, really love this thing. It was definitely something that I wasn't loving the idea of, of dropping, I think it all in for the iPad, the pencil and the keyboard. I might've been at like, $1,600, something like that. So I wasn't loving the idea of it and I was really nervous that I wouldn't find enough reasons to use it or enjoy it as much as I needed to to really justify that price point. But luckily I was wrong and I used this thing all day, every single solitary day. I use it like most people do, you know, to read or to watch TV while I'm cleaning the house. Also, I use it to work. Like I said, I get tons of work done on this thing, constantly on it. And then one thing I really wasn't anticipating getting so much use out of and enjoying as much as I do is my GoodNotes app. And GoodNotes is just an app that you use like like you can get notebooks in it. I use it to write notes. I'm a, I'm a big hand writer when it comes to lots of things, like typing things out. It's almost like, I don't feel like I interact with it enough for it to, to sink into my brain. I have to write it by hand. I don't know, that's just, but I have a digital planner that I have been using on my iPad, on my GoodNotes. This is it right here. I think I started using it last October, September, and I'll never go back. <laughs> like I'll never go back to paper, plan paper planners. Um, you guys have asked me to do an in-depth planner video. I am working on getting it together. Thumbs up if you wanna see it because I genuinely don't know how many people care, but I have completely transitioned from any type of digital, this is like my, I'm like a maestro right now, I'm sorry. Um, I've completely transitioned from any type of paper planning system, completely digital, and I'll never do anything else again. And uh, it's kind of a two-part system. I use Notion for like my bigger projects, massive to-do lists, goal setting, basically like a database of a bunch of information and the planner that I have in GoodNotes, I use to just track the day-to-days, kind of get a visual representation of my time, schedule my week, freaking love it. It's so easy to use. I'm absolutely obsessed with just that feature alone kind of makes it worth it. But the amount of work and things I have been able to do with this, especially like I said before, because my laptop is probably 15 pounds. So this is so cool and like compact and concise to me. I throw it in my purse when I'm running errands or I know I have to go to the doctor's office because I can just get it out and get a little work done while I'm waiting in the waiting room or something. Um, this is a real, this was a really good investment for me and I'm proud that I made it. I'm glad that I made it. I regret nothing about it. And if anything, how much use I have gotten out of this and how much it has benefited me is kind of helping me like, just like with this camera, look forward to and really want to be more intentionable, attentionable? Wow. Intentional about making those upgraded purchases because they make my life a lot easier and hopefully make my videos look better as in the case of the camera. <laughs> Up next are skincare devices. And I'm just gonna start off by saying this, I need to get this off my chest, okay? My name is Whitney Hedrick and I love skincare devices. I love them. I think they are more fun to me. I like them more than almost anything else in beauty. I like them because they're kind of that transitional space between your skincare and full blown going into an office treatment. Like it's not as good as one of them but better than the other. It's a nice little sweet spot to be in. And especially when we were in lockdown and as we're gonna to continue to be in lockdown for the foreseeable future, having good skincare devices really does uh, limit or minimize the need that you have for certain types of treatments. And I'll get into more specifics about that momentarily. I am gonna start off by saying that skincare devices, much like my Peloton, only give you the results you want if you use them. So. I would not recommend getting skincare devices if you've already got a drawer full of them that you're not pulling for, because nothing is going to change until you do. Uh, and that is something that I learned this year. I, sometimes I'm really diligent with them and like can't stop, won't stop. And other times I completely forget they exist. So <laughs> as nerdy as it sounds, 
I'm starting to write my skincare device schedule in my planner. Don't judge me. It is what it is. Also, I have several, I think I have, I'm up to six uh, skincare devices that all do different things that are coming in. I was so lucky and so blessed to be gifted them from some companies I reached out to. I'm making it a point to say I reached out to these companies because I want you to know that when you see them on my channel, this quid pro quo kind of started with me wanting this thing really bad. And I, I never really reach out to brands. It didn't even occur to me. And we'll start doing it now. <laughs> it didn't really even occur to me as an option, but I just took a shot and reached out to them and was like, hey girl, like, I want to try your product. I'd love to share it with my audience. And I was so blessed and so thankful that they were gracious enough to send them to me. So you will be seeing them. Get ready for them. I got an LED mask coming. I got a radio frequency device coming. I got a laser just for the <clears throat> eye area coming. I have a home IPL or hair removal device coming. I have an at-home hydrofacial device coming. Is that it? Seems like there's more. I'm sure I'm forgetting one. But yeah got a lot of stuff coming. I'm excited to test it all and share it with you. Anyway, as I said, I love skincare devices and I bought two of them in 2020 that were a little more expensive than any other ones I had bought before. And I thought I'd tell you what I think about them now. And the first one is the new face. If you've been watching me for any length of time, particularly around 2019, when I first heard of this thing, I was coveting it so hard. <laughs> Every time like a Sephora VIB sale would run around and it came down for that time for me to make my recommendation videos, I would always suggest that you guys get a device because in my opinion, if it's a good one, obviously there's probably some crappy ones out there, but if it's a good one, it's gonna last you forever. And if you go blow, you know, $100 on a La Mer foundation at the sale, you're only gonna have that until it runs out. Devices are forever. And that one, I can tell you that I love. I definitely love it. I love microcurrent as a whole. The way I, the way it makes sense to me was, was said by uh, one of my favorite channels on YouTube. It's Penn Smith Skincare. I will link her down below. You have something in your skin called ATP and that stands for adenosine triphosphate. Am I saying that right? Adenosine triphosphate, I think that's how you say it. Um, and the microcurrent, like if you think of the ATP as like a battery that needs to be charged, charging that battery helps stimulate collagen, lift and firm the skin, and it actually does physically lift your skin. You'll notice it immediately. You will have a much lifted impression, uh, excuse me, appearance. And over time that will go back down, um, but it does work with consistent time. You will see that it works. You'll really notice it and I love it. Uh, you're supposed to use it for a month straight and then you taper off and just kind of use it intermittently to maintain your results. The thing with the new face is I do enjoy using it. It's just that ever since I bought it, I became aware of other systems of microcurrent that I don't want to say they would be necessarily be any better or any worse, just different and ways of using it that I think would be beneficial. So for example, there's this company called 7E, I believe that's the name of the company, and they make something called the MyoLift Mini. And it looks like, I'll put a picture of it somewhere over here. It looks like a little, like a keyboard or something, like a child's toy, like a label maker. And it has these cords and you can use these little like wands to kind of do your microcurrent or you can use gloves and that just seems like so much easier and maybe a little bit better suited to kind of customizing your microcurrent facial to what you want. And they also make an eye mask, a micro microcurrent eye mask. Like that just does like call into me. So it's not to say that I would blanket statement, uh, try to convince you not to buy the new face. It's just that look around and make sure that's the way you want to go. I don't regret it at all. I think it's worth every penny. Again, it's just that with technology and like I'm about to get into with the light stem, uh, there's just always going to be something new coming out. I mean, Apple does it to us every single year, every year they drop the new phone, everybody acts like they have to have it. Uh, is it really any better? Maybe just a little bit. Like there's always going to be improvements in the technology. You really just have to decide like when it's time to pull the trigger. The, uh, new face costs like $300 something like that <laughs> but you guys I actually have the new face and the new face mini there's no difference I don't even know why I bought both of them don't judge me um just get the mini it's totally fine if you want it's like a hundred hundred fifty dollars cheaper anyway so the light stem is about 275 250 300 something in there I've been wanting that thing forever and I first heard of red light therapy or experienced it myself when I was getting a hydrofacial which is my favorite type of facial it's really the only kind I get they do a section of LED light therapy 
and I was just fascinated by it. I thought it was so cool and I wanted one because your at-home devices can do things your skincare can't do, but it can't do what an in-office treatment can. Now, in some cases, you really shouldn't expect that and in some cases, you're just, depending on like your dedication to your device and your budget, you might be better off skipping the device and going straight for the in-office treatment. It just depends. Now, where I think this differs is when it comes to red light, because even though an at-home red light is not necessarily going to be anywhere near as powerful as an in-office one is, red light really only works if you have repeated exposure to it. So I can't afford to go get a hydrofacial every week to get that real benefit of the red light. So having an at-home one that I could use a couple of times a week, a few times a week, every day sometimes, I don't even know if that's bad for me, but I've done it. <laughs> um, that really was appealing to me. So I wanted the light stem because from what I understood and from my research, it was the same caliber or quality of light penetration that you get at the in-office kind of treatments because it's made by the same company. Lightstem makes those lights for your esthetician or your nurse esthetician or whatever. I can't talk y'all, I feel rusty. I haven't filmed since before Christmas and that's what appealed to me. Now here's the thing, since I bought this, I have seen so many red light devices come out. I see them all the time, it's super popular. You should really look into <laughs> what you're getting in and what it's able to do because it's not all created equal. And I would hate for you guys to spend the kind of money they, even if it's not that expensive, if you're spending $80 on something that doesn't work, it's still $80 that's wasted. So make sure you do your research and find out for sure what kind of clinical tests or trials, really see if they know their stuff in terms of the um, efficacy and intensity of the red light, because really what you want is infrared and near infrared or red and near red, something like that. You kind of want a combination in a perfect world. But anyway, I'm chatty Kathy today. Um, I got this one, I liked it. I, I love it actually. Every time I use it, the results are pretty much instantaneous and in that I am like beaming after I use this thing, like glowing, it's not even funny. The downside is it, it kind of is like this. It doesn't, it's not even quite this big, but it's like a wand that you have to sit there and hold on your face for three minutes each section all over the face. And it's not the end of the world, you could just sit there and do it while you're watching TV, no big. So I'm definitely not gonna say that that should be a deterring factor. I just have used it enough time at, by now that, that once I started seeing the masks come out, the LED masks, I was like, oh, what was I thinking? I probably should have waited and got one of those. So I reached out to a company, like I said at the beginning of the video, that made an LED mask I'm interested in trying and they are so gracious to send it to me. I'll keep you posted on it. This is something, I don't regret either of these purchases, just to kind of like, spoiler alert, like give you the answer to the question this video poses. It's just that I've learned that with skincare devices, I, I think I would really weigh the pros and cons a little bit more, particularly with the red light. I don't feel that way about the new face so much because it works it does the the way it's used in terms of like hands versus using the device really isn't a deal breaker for me because the results are ostensibly going to be the same but with the red light it is such a time intensive treatment that it did kind of hinder me from getting a whole lot of use out of it so i, I wouldn't say i regret it this is really just going to come down to like are you the type of person who needs to have the newest technology all the time Clearly I'm not, as I said before, if my laptop and my camera are any indication. I just want the version of the product that I buy to be, I don't know, the easiest to use that it could be. Does that make sense what I'm trying to say? <laughs> this video is getting long. But yeah, I really like them and I look forward to talking about more skincare devices in the future. You guys let me know if there's any ones in particular you want me to test and report back to you about. I will definitely do it so you can make good decisions about buying your bougie ass skin devices yourself. All right guys, that is the end of this video. I'm sorry it was so long. I guess I had a lot to say to y'all today, but as always, I like it to the playrooms. As I said at the top of the video, the Patreon book club meeting is exclusive to Patreon. We do a live stream and I think I want to do a Zoom meeting. We tried it once before and it didn't go quite as smoothly as I wish it would have, but I have ideas of how I can make it a little bit better. And that way everyone can talk about their experience with the book, like a real book club, instead of just listen to me yammer on about it like you guys do every time you watch one of my videos. But as always, the Patreon is the place to be as far as I'm concerned. The live streams and the bonus content that go over there are awesome. And once the podcast resumes recording, which is scheduled right now to happen January 17th, they will also have first access to the podcast. I got so many people on my recent videos saying, you should start a podcast. And I'm like, 
I have one. I just haven't been recording in a long time. So we're getting back to it. But anyway, I hope you guys are having an amazing day. Check the down bar for links on my social media platforms. And I will catch you in the next one.